your hosting of the world to feel worthy. There are so many deliverables within the games. There are so many that if you start thinking of that up front, you will be paralyzed. All we could think of was, let's get everybody to agree on a mark. Because that identity has to work on everything. It has to be stitched, televised. It has to be functional in every possible capacity. The identity becomes the linchpin for thousands of individual design projects. It connects everything from the mascots to the sports pictograms to the theme of the games and ultimately reflects what the story is. This emblem should be global look, like uh, not only a small Japanese community kind of image, because it's a history. The Olympics Games is a history for every country. You want to promote your country, but you also have to keep in mind that this is a gathering of the world. Too much rah-rah for your country needs to be played back, uh, just a little bit in it, but it still at the same time needs to expose your culture, and it still needs to talk to your own legacy and your own heritage. If you look at the Athens logo that was ultimately selected, it was that crown of laurel leaves on the blue background. It very much relates back to Greek culture. It picked up on all those connotations and touch points that really kind of helped people look at it and go, oh, okay, well, it's not Switzerland. Rio is a wonderful example. People in a circle holding their hands and at the same time showing the mountain from Rio that is a symbol of the city and bring all this together in the colors of the country. This is the essence of what a logo could be. As far as Sochi was concerned, it's quite an interesting geography where it is the mountains literally come down to the lake. And actually when you look at the final logo, it is actually a reflection. Dot RU was indicative of the time uh, that we are in, uh, in the sense that the games itself were going to be more digitally recorded than any other game previously. We needed to make sure not only that we were celebrating the city itself in the mark, but then the wider vocabulary which celebrated the patterns and the cultures of Russia, this is where it became national. For a lot of people, when we think of Mexico, of course we think of great athletes that were the stars of this edition, but at the same time we have in mind the emblem and all what was created by Lance Weimann. Remedis Vasquez said, um, we don't want to do anything that looks like a Mexican sleeping under a cactus with a sombrero pulled down. He said, that's not Mexico now. We want to develop a contemporary program. Now, growing up here in New York, I didn't know much about, I know they had piñatas, but I didn't know much about the culture at all. So the first week we spent over at the Museum of Anthropology, and when I started getting in touch with the history of Mexico City, I mean, it was amazing. I was like a, a kid just in a toy box, you know? I mean, it was just incredible. Lance worked with other great Mexican designers and gave himself over to this entire culture and allowed it to sort of just flow through them, and it came out beautifully. There had been a tradition in recent games of doing a competition, and that's the, the route we took, um, where we basically um, asked designers across the country and around the world to participate and, and provided a brief about what we wanted the games to be all about. This idea of welcoming the world and the warmth of Canadians was perfectly distilled into this emblem that we selected, which was of an Anukshuk. Anukshuk being rock structures that the Inuit people of the north used as a means of communicating with others. The Olympic Committee in Barcelona they made the briefing. The symbol or the logo has to represent a city that's Mediterranean, colorful, that is um, dynamic, that uh, has always believed in sport. And I said, okay. I said, well, this is something. I don't know, it's a jump. And I said, okay, it's a jump. It's the jump that they want for Barcelona. Barcelona was unknown. At that time, it had very little international influence. So this is the launching of Barcelona as a city. 
I loved Salt Lake because the patchwork of the symbol looked like an American Indian symbol. You see a snow-capped mountain, crossed skis, you see a sunset, you see a Native American symbol, and you see in reverse a snowflake. And then Nagano, it looks like a bursting snow flower against a mountaintop that was snow-capped. And each one of the petals is a representation of an Olympic event, a downhill skier, the luge, a ski jump. But the other thing that was really kind of wonderful was that in many respects, it looks like a burst. And Nagano is the home of fireworks. At the closing ceremony, they were able to produce fireworks that would burst out in that Nagano symbol. With Atlanta, it was the 100th year centennial. The symbol's a torch on one inspection. When you look closer, you see the 100, and part of the flame are stars, which represent the athletes and the top part of the flame is a perfect gold star which reaches perfection. The whole concept of what the Olympics stand for is coming together and celebrating perfection in achievement. And being a part of that was extremely exciting. The gold star, the Olympic medal for the designer, is seeing it happen, getting it produced, being able to be a part of it.